Hello, I'm Sophie Masson. I'm the author of Scarlet in the Snow. Scarlet in the Snow can be loosely described as a fairy tale thriller stroke romance. Um, it's part of um, a series that I'm writing which is set in the same fairy tale world. The first one was called Moonlight and Ashes. They're set in different countries and um, imaginary countries, fairyland if you like, fairy tale land. Um, and uh, Scarlet in the Snow is based partly on uh, uh, Russian fairy tales, particularly um, the Scarlet Flower, which is the Russian version of um, Beauty and the Beast, um, and also another famous Russian fairy tale, which is called Fenis the Falcon. But it's very much also very much a novel which is around a young girl's journey from naive young writer to fully fledged adventurer and lover and, and also writer in the end. Well, Beauty and the Beast is one of my favourite stories. In fact, it's probably my top favourite fairy tale. Um, there's something about Beauty and the Beast which appealed to me as a child, as a teenager, but also um, as an adult. It's a very romantic story. Um, it's a very, it's a story also. Beauty is very much uh, a very powerful character. She's not, she doesn't wait for things to happen. She actually does it. She's the one who says to her father in the original story, well, you know, um, I will go and, and look after this. Um, so she's, she's very much um, a proactive character, but she has a quiet kind of courage. You know, she's just not a sort of a, uh, not just feisty. She's actually got a lot of, um, a lot of quiet courage. And I always love that. And I just love the whole romantic thing of turning this beast into a man. You know, it's sort of rather appealing. Um, and the Russian um, version is so beautiful. Um, a lot of the Russian fairy tales are, are not so well known, but they're, they're really extraordinarily beautiful. And I've, I've been fascinated by Russia since I was very young and have been there a couple of times as well. So part of the atmosphere of the novel comes from that as too. I think they're because they, they tell very deep stories about people, um, they're very, uh, they both of this world and not of this world. So they give you hope, they give you a means of escape, but also they're very much, um, uh, they tell you things about the human soul, about, about what people are like. Um, like for instance, when I wrote Moonlight and Ashes, which was before Scarlet in the Snow, it, it, you know, at its heart, it's based on the story Cinderella. And the story Cinderella at its heart is a story of an abused and neglected child. However, there's, all, there's hope for that child. There's some, there's, she's going to be loved, you know, she's going to be wanted from, so it's a beautiful thing because it both tells you about the reality, this very hard, dark reality, and yet there's hope. And I think that's what they offer, which is so strong. And at the same time, they're very, um, because they take you out of this world and there's all these wonderful things that you can do. It's a bit like being in a, in a kind of, um, in a wonderful dream, but, I sort of say to people, it's both intoxicating and refreshing. There's something about it which is both, um, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love going on, on swings and stuff. And what I used to love to do was to go really high and put my head back, really back. And all the blood would rush to your head, you know, it gives you this kind of, whoa, this is so wonderful. And that's what you feel, that's what I feel like when I enter a fairy tale world. It's like you're going, whoa, you know, you're sort of transported into this other thing. But at the same time, it is not airy fairy, which is sort of funny. It's very, very strong, um, very strong details and things about a world which is really very much there. So I think that's the appeal. It's, and they sort of speak timelessly to people somehow. Well, for Scarlet in the Snow, it's very much about, first of all, about um, the virtue of learning um, patience and cunning, uh, but also about not trusting outward appearances. I mean, you know, in the story of Beauty and the Beast, of course, that's very important. Beauty has to learn to trust the beast, even though he looks so terrifying and he acts so terrifying at first. But she gets to know that behind this terrible facade is this human being who's suffering. Um, and so she needs to sort of, to get beyond her fear and so on. But also there is very much in Scarlet in the Snow because it's also about, it takes in other fairy tales such as Fenris the Falcon where the girl has to go looking for her love. 
who's disappeared. And um, it's about, you know, endurance and about having to go through all these obstacles so that you can have a happy ending. Um, so it is very much about, you know, um, in the story, Natasha is, she's a, she's a very strong character. She's very determined. She's brave. She's all those things. But she goes through a particular period when she goes, she has to be the servant of a witch for three days and three nights and she can't speak during that time. Very difficult, especially for somebody who's a young budding writer, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, writers like to speak. So she, it's very difficult for her. She has to learn other things during that time, that enforced silence. So it was really, the moral is, I suppose, both to be true to yourself, but also not to sort of jump to conclusions, to sort of have a bit of patience to work things out.